One. Hi, this is Daria Steigman at SteigmanCommunications.com, and I'm here today with Phil Simon, who is the author of The Age of the Platform. Hi, Phil. Hey. Thank you for joining me this morning. Daria, thanks for having me. And your book, we've just been talking a little offline about your book and about platforms, and I was really interested in sort of the next step of your book, sort of where your book leaves off. How, I mean, your book talks a lot about four big companies, Google, Facebook, Amazon, and the one I'm missing. <laughs> <laughs> How could you miss Apple? It's worth half a trillion dollars. <laughs> because I'm a PC. <laughs> so, but I wanted to ask you a couple of questions about really how entrepreneurs, how small business people can take some of the lessons learned from these companies and apply them to their own businesses. Sure. So I guess my first question then would be, what are the top three reasons why entrepreneurs and smaller companies need to understand platforms? Well, first off, I'd say because they're the future. Um, it's obvious to me that you can do more with a platform and an ecosystem than you can without one. Um, and that doesn't mean that you have to spend millions or billions of dollars like Amazon, Apple, Facebook, and Google. As you know, in the book, I profile smaller companies that embrace sort of platform thinking. So first, I, I really do think that it's the future. And if you, so that's number one. Number two, if you only do one thing, then I would argue that you're really maximizing your risk. So for instance, if you just do, in my case, writing books, and I don't do speaking or I don't do website design or I don't do paid writing or other things, then what happens if my book, as we we're talking about, doesn't sell very well? So as a small business, let's just say that you build websites. That's all you do. And for some reason, you're not getting a lot of traction with that. Well, to me, why not also offer social media consulting? Because if you're a small business and you don't have a website and you want company X to build one, well, it stands to reason that they're going to need some training about how to blog, how to understand Twitter, you know, social media, channels like LinkedIn. So to me, you're really leaving money on the table and you really can get more from each client. You don't force them to go away from you because you don't do those kinds of things. Now, that's not to say that every small business can offer everything, but there are sort of natural extensions or parallel lines of business that just make sense. A friend of mine ran a chiropractic studio and over the last year I was consulting with him and he launched acupuncture, he launched wellness, he launched diet, he launched massage. Because if you're coming in with back pains, why do I need to go to the chiropractor and then drive across the street to go get a massage? Why not stay there under one roof? So offering these parallel lines of business, I think, just makes a lot of sense. And I would argue the third reason is that you never know what's going to be successful, right? I mean, who would have thought that Google would have it was just a search engine in 1998, and now it is really so much more, even though it makes still 85% of its revenue from search engines. So we can't predict the future. We live in very um, uncertain times. So if you launch a platform, if you build out different planks, you may find that your company is growing in directions you didn't expect. And as we saw with a company like Amazon, you can be a first mover. You can be one of the first companies to offer a service. Um, it's very difficult these days to play catch up, right? If you start a blog today, what are the odds that you're going to get any kind of traction? Well, the world isn't hurting for content. So there are a bunch of reasons to answer your question that I think small businesses and entrepreneurs ought to re really read the book and embrace its thinking. Well, and following up on that, do you have some examples of smaller companies adapting platforms beyond just planks? Because planks at some level is a form of business diversification mm -hmm. that isn't necessarily sort of tied to the tech, it has, doesn't have a technology component per se. But, you know, is this really just still bleeding edge stuff or are there some good examples out there? Oh, no, there, I think there's some great examples out there. I mean, um, but do you want me to talk specifically about companies that are embracing technologies? Well, no, I mean, uh, no, not so much technologies, but embracing some of the other elements, whether it's the cooperative elements of, uh, because your definition of a platform is planks, it's the eco, it's really the, it's the ecosystem more mm -hmm. broadly, it's collaboration with customers and users and vendors, and it's sort of the broader. Okay. So, in, does that make sense now? Uh, no, I, I think it does make sense, and, and one of the examples that I use in the book is a company called um, MyPod Studios, and they have created a private video platform. Now, they run sort of on an advertising-based model, but they're encouraging people to upload and create their own content, or I was just blogging on the age of the platform.com about a company I discovered about two weeks ago called Udemy. It's Academy of You, so U-D-E-M-Y, and I think they've done some interesting thing with, with platforms because they allow 
individuals like me to create a course on, say, the new small, my last book, or on the age of the platform, or you know, WordPress design or whatever. So you can go there and you can watch a course. It could be free or it could, you could charge for it. But as you do that, in terms of ecosystems, then the, the Udemy make, takes a cut of, I think it's 15 or 30%, depending on what you set up. But then other people as well are making money. So you're incentivizing people to, to, to participate in your ecosystem. And while it's on a much, much smaller scale than, say, Apple's App Store or Amazon.com, it's the same concept. You're reaching out to your ecosystem because you want them to generate the content. Server space is cheap. Storage is cheap. So if I create a 10-part course on whatever and nobody buys it, it doesn't really cost Udemy everything. But if it does blow up, then they obviously make a lot of money. So I don't know if that's a, an example for your question. No, I think that's a great example. Can you also, you talk a bit about the key components of a platform. If I'm a small, as a small company, where do you advise small companies to start when they're looking at platforms? One of the key things I'll say, Daria, is to use existing platforms as planks in your own. So it, it doesn't mean that you have to spend eight hours a day on Facebook. But if your company doesn't have a Facebook page and isn't active in conversations on Facebook, well, you're sort of ignoring a place where 845 million people spend a decent amount of time. You know, ditto Twitter, uh, ditto LinkedIn. So using existing platforms, I think, is a really uh, important idea. There's no sense in reinventing the wheel, right? If I want, I can go to elance.com and find some developer and for $30,000 build a bookstore to sell my books. Why? No one's going to go there, right? If people trust Amazon. You can order like that with one click. So to me, it's silly to reinvent the wheel. But I also explain to small business owners that it makes sense to get on board early. Again, with something like Pinterest that we were talking about before, I don't know if it's going to be a big deal in six months or a year. I'm not that smart. But why not just see what all the buzz is about? Maybe you wind up driving traffic to your site because you were one of the first uh, barber shops on Pinterest and you have all these funky haircuts, right? I, I don't know. But my point is that if you're early to the game, then people would, there conceivably could be a buzz about it. As I said before, if you start a blog now, congratulations, but we're not really hurting for content. So what are the odds that you could monetize that blog? I still think you should have one, but I'm a big believer in experimentation. It's, it's one of the key themes in the book. Well, I think for small business, for any business, experimentation is critical because otherwise you are constantly just assuming that what's working for you will continue to work. So I think of it sometimes maybe it's a bit like the old model of throwing, you know, pins at, you know, throwing pins at a dartboard, or darts at a dartboard and figuring out what will happen, what, which will stick. But, you know, having a strategy so you're aiming at least for the bullseye. <laughs> right. I mean, you're not, to, to go with your analogy, and I like that, you're throwing darts at the board, but hopefully you're not doing it from 100 feet away, right? Hopefully yeah. you're, you're doing it at a reasonable distance, and I'm, I'm terrible at darts, uh, but it, so I'll throw it at 20 and I'll wind up at a 3. But, you, you, I mean, I think the analogy is a good one. If you're throwing darts and you don't, the board is this big and you're across the room, you're never going to hit it. But if you've got a big, you know, there's something to be said, I think, for intelligently managing the risk because, you know, you may not have the funds and most small businesses don't to spend six months on a project that goes nowhere. But what if you spend a day a month for six months playing with something? What if you embraced ecosystems? What if you found a partner? What if you encouraged other people to develop something? So I, I guarantee you, without knowing a great deal about that company, Udemy, it started out as an idea and it kind of caught on. And obviously it's making money because they were able to scale it up. Um, to me, the costs of, um, of failure are a lot lower than they were 15 years ago. It's not like you have to spend millions of dollars. You can use uh, Amazon Cloud Services or you, know, you can use WordPress to develop your site. You can use all these low-cost tools that I talk about in the new small. And if your company grows, that's great. But if it doesn't, then it's not like you're going to be in debt for the rest of your life. So again, thank you. This is Daria Steinman with Steinman Communications, and we've been talking with Phil Simon, author of The Age of the Platform. Thank you, Phil. Thank you.